It's time for Spiritual Awakening Radio. Today's program, The Key to Unlock the Inner Door of Spirituality. This living mystic path of the Masters. Long ago, Bawa Harnam Singh once asked Hazur Baba Sawan Singh, What difference is there between your faith and Guru Nanak's teachings? None at all, the great master replied. Nanak Kabir Dadu, Paltu Tulsi Das, Jagjawan, Shams Tabriz, Malana Rumi, Hafez, Baba Farid, and all other saints to whatever country, clime, or religion they belonged, preached the same truth. The principles, the method, the teachings always remain the same, though the key is transferred from one house to another after some time. It is said that God fulfills himself in many ways lest one good old custom should corrupt the world. At one time the key to unlock the inner door was in the house of Kabir. Then it shifted to Guru Nanak, where it remained for ten generations. It then went to Tulsi Sahib, from where it came to Swamiji, Seth Shivdayalji. This is the law of nature. Change becomes essential after a certain period. You will find that the followers of such great masters have totally forgotten their real teachings, though it has been only a few centuries since they departed from the world. The method of spiritual exercises, which was the essence of their faith during the time of the previous masters, is quite unknown to their followers of today. Now coming back to Sant Mat, it is not a new path. It is as old as the world and was born with man. There is one and the same path for God realization for all times and for all countries and races. Saints have been coming to all countries and in all ages. Their way of life may differ according to the customs, climate, characteristics, and conditions of the country to which they belonged, or the time in which they came, but their teachings, whether given in Sanskrit, Persian, Hebrew, Chinese, or Arabic, always remains the same. A reply from Hazur Baba Sawan Singh, the great master of Bayas, mentioning the key to unlock the inner door of spirituality, how it moves around, how there are mystic movements, spiritual movements, schools of spirituality that have appeared and disappeared throughout the centuries. The school of spirituality moves around, is around for a while, disappears, but other lights appear. And that knowledge, that mystic experience is passed on from one generation to the next. I've done programs in the past about how there is no permanent school of mystics on planet Earth in ancient Greece or in the Punjab or some location where for thousands of years people migrate to to sit at the feet of the masters. How that mysticism is a fragile thing that is alive for a while and then the light fades The last master passes on and the path becomes extinct in a certain time and place. But 
the branches of this tree of mysticism keep on branching out and from generation to generation there is always a living master or several masters operating somewhere in the world. I was most intrigued by Sawan Singh's statement mentioning different languages, you know, Sanskrit, Persian, Hebrew, Chinese, Arabic. I also think of Greek and Coptic. The key to unlock the inner door of spirituality. The ingredients. A qualified living master, a qualified living teacher who not only teaches the theory of the path, but is the embodiment of the reality of that. When the camera is off and no one is looking, they are still walking their talk, deeply enmeshed in meditation. A qualified teacher, a competent living master, communicating via initiation to his or her students the secrets of meditation practice with no lost teachings or techniques but the complete instructions and faithful disciples to carry out those spiritual exercises and experience the kingdom of God for themselves Mystic paths come and go and knowledge becomes lost over time. I'm both interested in the living path of the masters and also the history of that path of saints and mystics on planet Earth. And as you can tell from scrolling through the collection of podcasts here, sometimes I've specialized in the Gnostics and Christian mysticism of the past. I've mentioned that mystic paths may start off as vegetarian and are quite aware of the inner regions, the inner planes, and have a view that the body is the true temple of inner space and going within is the focus. But after a while, those teachings are edited out. For instance, did you know that Rumi was vegan? and his Sufi order began as a vegan or vegetarian Sufi order. Now that's all disappeared. Now that's all gone. The following is from Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj from his book, Harmony of All Religions. The teachings of Jesus and his followers correspond closely with the practices of Sant Mat. From the point of view of the teachings of Santmat, through the inner meditation practices, Jesus entered the kingdom of God. It is believed by many that Peter, James, and John received esoteric teachings from Jesus. Some think this private instruction from the Master was about the practice of inner meditation. Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj. And indeed, through my own research, I found proof of this. This, for instance, is a verse from a, an apocryphal text known as the Acts of Peter. Give ear, withdraw your souls from all that appears but is not truly real. Close these eyes of yours, close your ears withdraw from actions that are outwardly seen and you shall know the reality of Christ and the whole secret of your salvation. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Descend into your heart and in it you will find the ladder which leads to the kingdom of God. Saint Isaac the Syrian once said, the ascension of the soul, now therefore, while you are in the body, do not let matter rule over you. Arise, let us go away from this place. A saying attributed to Jesus in a book called 
Gospel of the Savior, a lesser known gospel copied in the Coptic language of Egypt that was unearthed a few years back. From the Book of Grace preserved in the ascetical homilies of St. Isaac of Nineveh, the intellect in which the divine love is implanted and which by grace has been accounted worthy of the knowledge of the truth, never ceases from spiritual rumination upon divine mysteries. This is from John of Dalyatha, another Syriac mystic. Syriac is a dialect of the Aramaic language. The light of Christ is noetic, mystical light, and blessed is the soul which is accounted worthy to see it. So then look at God within yourself, how God is light, for his nature is a glorious, many-splendored light. He manifests the light of his nature to those who love him in all the worlds. That is his glory. And he changes the image of those who see it to the likeness of his glory. Look within and see him in your being. The Apocryphon of James says, understand what the great light is. This is from the Apocalypse of Paul, a book from the Nag Hammadi Library, Discovery of Egypt. Then we went up to the sixth heaven, and I gazed up on high and saw a great light shining down on the sixth heaven. For more on the ascension of the soul, see the book The Ascension of Isaiah, another apocryphal text. You'll find most of these at a site called gnosis.org. This is from Bar Hebraeus, the book of the dove, on the varying states of the perfect or initiated have to go through. The seventh is that of hearing the sanctifications of the angels, which cannot be embodied in spoken words, but are defined in intellectual sounds. In other words, not audible sounds, but subtle sounds heard spiritually. Bar Hebraeus, Book of the Dove. What else is Christ but the sound of God? A quote from a book called The Acts of John. And finally, from this collection of mystical forgotten texts of the Western world, this is from Simon of Tybuta, a Syriac mystic. God is called in all the sacred books, good, love, knowledge, wise, just, light, ray, brightness, word, life, etc., so that our name may be joined with his and enhanced by his, and so that we may desire the love of the one who loved us and came down from the height of his goodness to the lowliness of our humility in order to raise us from earthliness to spirituality by uniting the divinity that is in us with the highest divinity. The key to unlock the inner door of spirituality, this living mystic path of the masters. Kirpal Singh once said in a booklet called God Power, Christ Power, Master Power, in the true terminology of the saints or masters, 
A blind man is defined not as one who has no eyes in his head, but as one whose inner eye is closed. Those who do not see the light of God are all, excuse me, blind. When they come to a master and he gives them a sitting, the inner eye is opened and they see the light of God. When they return, they are men with the inner eye opened. Similarly, before going to a master, a man is deaf. When the master gives him a sitting, an initiation, he begins to hear the music of the spheres, and he becomes aware. Kirpal Singh on healing the, the blind, if you will, healing the deaf, initiating souls into the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven that they might see and hear spiritually. Kripal Singh, God power, Christ power, Master power. The following is a satsang discourse by Baba Ram Singh from August of 2022. Once we came to the eye center, the progress further in the inner planes is much faster. Baba Ram Singh. While sitting for meditation, we should focus at the eye center and we should do our Simran and we should contemplate on the radiant form of the Master. We should focus the attention at the eye center because the moment we focus, or rather the moment the focus moves from the eye center, then the mind wanders here and there and it disturbs us. So we should keep our focus there. So Kabir Sahib has also said, the rosary that you move in your hand that moves in hand and the repetition one does and the repetition does that is done by the tongue but this is not Simran Kabir says the rosary that you move in your hand that moves in the hand and the repetition one does that is done by the tongue but this is not Simran because by moving the rosary in the hand and repeating or by repetition of the tongue the mind is still free and the mind is wandering here and there. So that is not the way Simran should be done. Therefore saints have said we should focus at the eye center where the soul sits and the mind also sits. So that is where we should focus and do our Simran, the repetition of sacred names of God, and contemplate on the form of the Master. When we do Simran there, it is possible that we may not be able to visualize the form of the Master or contemplate on the form of the Master, so we should not get disheartened. We should continue doing our Simran focused at the eye center. Even if there is darkness, we should focus in that darkness and continue to do our Simran. Our Master is sitting there only. And as soon as the mind starts getting purer, we will be able to start visualizing him and seeing him. The form of the master is very pure, and therefore, in our faculty of visualization, the form doesn't stay because there is a lot of impurity of the mind. As we do our Simran, we purify the mind, and then, gradually, that form of the master becomes steadier in our faculty of visualization. So while we do our meditation, the mind keeps wandering here and there. Every time we bring the mind back to the eye center and keep doing our Simran, as we continue with this practice, one day or the other, the mind will become steady 
and we will be able to get success in our meditation. The mind is not an ordinary thing, and the mind does not want to do meditation. So initially, we have to force the mind to do it. And as we develop that habit, and as it gets habituated to do the Simran and focus at the eye center, then gradually the mind will start doing the Simran on its own. When the mind starts doing Simran, then we should understand that we have received success in our meditation, because then the mind is continuously engrossed in the Simran. Even if we are talking to somebody, the Simran will continue at all times. So when the mind starts becoming pure, then the attention of the soul starts getting focused at the eye center. And as we do the Simran, as the mind does the Simran, the attention starts coming to the eye center. And then occasionally we get a thought or we get a resolve in the mind. Then again, the attention drops down. And again, we have to focus. We have to do our Simran and the attention again starts coming to the eye center. That is, we have to keep practicing that. That is why to come from the toe of our feet to our eye center, it takes a very long time. Later, once we come to the eye center, the progress further in the inner planes is much faster. This part of our practice is where the progress is slow. It is called the people marg or the path of the ant. Like an ant with the intuition, the ant knows that there is a ripe fruit on the tree. So the ant makes its effort and starts climbing on the tree. But because of wind or because of other things, it falls down. And then it picks itself up and again starts doing it. It doesn't get discouraged. It keeps on doing this. It keeps on climbing. Even if it takes the whole day for it to climb the tree and reach that fruit. But it finally gets success and it reaches there. After the eye center, the next path is the way the soul ascends up. It is called the mean marg or the path of the fish. Like on a stream of water which flows down from the mountain, the fish goes against the current of that stream. It catches the current of that stream and climbs up the mountain. Like that, the soul also ascends. Also, when it rains very heavily, the fish from the lakes are also seen to climb up to the clouds and we see those fish falling in our fields or on the road. And this is how they climb on that stream with their effort. So after that, after Brahm, the path of the soul, it is called Makari Marg or the path of the spider. The way of the spider moves from one place to another it makes that silk thread from itself and on that it rides on the air or the jet stream. So the spiders are known to have moved across continents like that. So beyond Brahm, the soul also has the power of 12 suns and on its own power it starts ascending further. When the soul reaches Sach Khand, the path after that is that of a swan or the Vahang Marg. Like a swan, when it wants to fly on the top of a tree, it quickly goes on the top, or if it wants to come to the bottom, it flies down. Like that, once the soul has reached Sach Khand, the true spiritual region, in the blink of an eye, it can come into this world, or it can go back. In Sant Mat, Every disciple has to go through these four paths. Everyone has to go and descend on these four paths. A satsang discourse of Baba Ram Singh. So 
some verses of mystic poetry from the saints. On reaching Satlok, the true timeless abode, I have darshan, I have vision of Sat Purush, the supreme being, and hear the sound of the wonderful bin or harp. Then I become absorbed in the holy feet of Radha Swami, the lord of the soul, in the region whose entrance lie the regions of Alak Lok and Agam Lok, or Agam Lok. Love reigns supreme there, producing a state of consciousness and rapturous bliss. And that region overflows with grace and mercy all the time. Radha Swami is my father, Radha Swami is my mother, and my husband. He affectionately takes me in his lap. That's from Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram Bahadur, from Prem Bani Radha Swami, Volume 4, a collection of hymns which read like psalms or mystic poetry in English. And finally, on today's Satsang, Sant Mat Satsang podcast, Spiritual Awakening Radio, some verses from Sant Nam Dev, one of my favorite classic Sants, dating back to the 12th century, one of the first known individuals called a Sant. Before then, you have, you know, Rishis who wrote some of the Upanishads that are more ethereal. But in that medieval period is where you first start getting people called Sants. Endless are the songs of the Vedas, says Sant Namdev. Endless are the songs of the Vedas, Puranas, and Shastras. But I will not sing them. I will play the unstruck music of the Veena in the imperishable region of the Lord. I will sing the praises of the uninvolved, omnipresent God, merged into the transcendent unstruck melody. I will attain the primal Lord and will merge into the light of God. I will not go on pilgrimages nor bathe in holy waters, nor cause pain to animals. All the sixty-eight holy places my master has shown me within my body. Only here I will bathe. I will not seek glory and acclaim from people around me. Says Nama, my attention is fixed on the Lord. Sant Nam Dev, one of the great classic Sants of India, speaking about how his path is within, within the true temple of the human body, where inner space is accessed if we sit at the feet of the masters and follow their teachings and persist in our meditation following the key to unlock the inner door of spirituality. Those very special teachings that appear from time to time at the feet of a living master. A rare thing in this world. Something worth remembering, celebrating, and persistently following, always and always. Thanks for joining me today on this edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio.